Matthew 13. This is going to be the parable of the sower. They've just heavily rejected the Lord Jesus in chapter 12, committed the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, and you're going to see him move into doing parables now because of their rejection of him. A parable is a veiled truth. Not everybody's going to understand it. The ones that don't want to believe are not going to understand the parables. But this is the parable of the sower. And it says in Matthew 13, 1, the same day went Jesus out of the house. That's significant because who did he come to? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he went out of the house. It's like he's going away from Israel and sat by the seaside. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him so that he, that he went into a ship and sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. So imagine the Lord Jesus Christ. Just picture it in your mind. Great multitudes gathered around him. He gets up into this ship to teach this parable. And he's in that ship because your voice travels better over water than it does on land. And it says, And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And then if you go down to verse 18, he's going to explain the parable of the sower. Matthew thirteen eighteen. It says, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When any one heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, there's your fowls, and catcheth the way that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. So those by the wayside are the ones that understand it not, and the fowls come down and devour up the seed so it can't get sown in their heart. It says, But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it, yet hath he no root, yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while, for when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that receives seed among thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. But he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Now let's look at Luke 8 as well, and it's going to explain the parable again. Luke 8, 11, it says, Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. So the seed that's being thrown out is the word of God. And you heard that song, the word of God is like little bitty seeds. Well, the seed's the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, for um, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. So the ones on the rock, the seeds fall down on the rock, and they spring up quickly, but then they don't have any water. They don't have enough water to live on, so when the sun scorches down, on them, they just wither away. In time of temptation, they fall away. They didn't have, they didn't get deep enough in the ground to get enough water. And that which fell among thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. But that on the good ground are they 
which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Okay, now back to Matthew 13, 1. Matthew 13, 1. So you got the sower. That's obviously the Lord Jesus. The seed, that's the word of God. The wayside. The wayside are those that hear the word, but have it snatched from their heart. The fowls, that would be the devil, his unclean spirits. The stony places. The stony places represents the heart who receives the word with joy, but they don't get deep-rooted, so when the sun is up, they're scorched. They don't have enough water from the soil to survive the heat, the tribulation, the persecution. The thorns. The thorns represent the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. And then the good ground represents a sincere, genuine, believing, and soft heart that receives the seed and gets deep-rooted, and then it bears fruit. So now, let's look at the parable and see some things that you need. You need the sower. The sower is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, the living Word. In Matthew 13, 37, it says, He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The one sowing seed is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Back in Psalm 126, 5, it says, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. That's exactly what Jesus did. He sowed in tears. Hebrews 5, 7, Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. You know the famous verse, Jesus wept. Luke 19, 41 says, And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. He sowed in tears. Psalm 126, 5, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. And he that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. The Lord Jesus Christ bore precious seed. He went forth weeping, bearing precious seed. So you need the sower, the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't have the sower, you don't have anything. If you don't have him, all you got to do is believe on him. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 16, 31. He died on the cross for your sins. He shed his blood. He was buried and resurrected. Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He's the sower. He has those who help him sow. When someone is speaking truth from the word of God, they become one of the Lord's sowers. You need a preacher, a teacher. You need somebody to give you the word of God. The Word of God itself, when you read it, it's throwing little bitty seeds. Are you going to hear them? Or are you going to reject them? You need the seed. You need the sower. Number two, you need the seed. The seed is the Word of God, the written Word. When you get saved, your heart was good ground. Your heart may not be good right now, but... When you got saved, it's like your heart was good ground. Because you heard the word, you let it get down in you, and you believed. And in 1 Peter 1.23, it says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So the word of God is incorruptible seed. You need the seed. You need a King James Bible. The word of God is like itty-bitty seeds just like the song. So you need one. You need a wide margin King James Bible to catch all those little bitty seeds. If you got those wide margins on all four sides, when somebody, when the sower's up there sowing, you can catch those little bitty seeds. You can make references next to the verses. You can make footnotes and you can keep it in memory. Your Bible will become like your second brain, a big storage compartment for all your little bitty seeds and then you go back and you read it and you read it over and over again and it can soak in and take deep root 
and you can grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So you need the sower, you need the seed, and number three, you need to stay off the wayside. That's where the devil hangs out. Ephesians 4.27, neither give place to the devil, and you know, you shouldn't go to his place either. Proverbs 14.12, there is a way, there is a way, which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You know, what the first thing the devil wants to do is swoop down and get that word of God out of you. Just like he did the first time he showed up. Eve had one command, don't eat off the tree. That was it. That was the only little bitty seed she had. What did she do? She ate off the tree. Because the devil come down and he stole that away. And he made it look good too. Because there is a way which seemeth right unto a man. You know, Eve looked at the tree. She saw that it was good for food, pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired to make one wise, three positive things. That way seemed right unto a man, seemed right to Eve. But the end thereof was the ways of death. She died physically. She died spiritually. So any place, person, activity that causes you to doubt the seed is from the devil. Any place, person, activity that causes you to doubt the seed so that it doesn't take root is a devil or an unclean spirit. So you get on the good way. Stay off the wayside. Get on the good way. John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You see, the things you need all go back to the Lord Jesus. You need the sower. He's the sower. You need the seed. Well, he's the word. He's the living word that gave you the written word. You need to stay off the wayside. Well, you got the right way to go. The Lord Jesus Christ, Matthew seven thirteen and 14. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So stay off the broad way. Stay off the wayside. You know, the wayside is those that hear and understand it not. And then come down comes the fowls and takes the seed so that it can't take root. That pictures the devil when somebody's up sowing seeds of the word of God. And it's not taking root because the devil's taking it right away. You see, everyone seems to be on the wayside. But in Exodus 23, 2, it says, Thou shalt not follow, follow a multitude to do evil. The proud hang out on the wayside. In Psalm 140 and verse 5, The proud have hit a snare for me and cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set gins for me. Traps. So you need to stay off the wayside. Number four, you need to drive away the fowls. The F-O-W-L-S. That picture, the devil and his henchmen. In Mark 9.25, it's funny, it calls them a foul spirit. F-O-U-L, but still, that's kind of funny. You see, spirits are like birds. Revelation 18.2 says, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit. F-O-U-L, foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. See, connecting unclean birds and unclean spirits. Hateful bird. There's your real angry birds right there. Ecclesiastes 10.20, Curse not the king, no, not in thy thought, and curse not the rich in thy bedchamber. For a bird of the air shall carry the voice, and that which hath wings shall tell the matter. You know, when you think you're alone, you're never really alone. You say something out loud, there may not be anybody else in the room, but their spirits are there, and that which hath wings shall tell the matter. So birds are like unclean spirits. And behold, a sower went forth to sow, Matthew 13, 3. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came down and devoured them up. The fowls, the devil, the unclean spirits, they don't want that word of God soaking in you. 
So the distractions, the resistance, the setbacks, and all the things you face while putting out the word, while sowing the seed, that could be the fowls trying to steal the seed so that it doesn't get into the hearts of the listeners. So when you're hearing somebody sow seeds, keep your ears open and your eyes on the seed as it's being sown. The devil's crowd are unclean birds, but the Holy Spirit descended like a dove, Matthew 3.16. The Holy Spirit puts you in remembrance of the word. In John 14.26, the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. See, the, the Holy Spirit wants you to remember the words. It wants you to keep the words. The unclean spirits want to take the words away. Big difference. So, those unclean spirits, pictured by unclean birds, you see the Lord associated with the dove, with the Holy Spirit descending like as a dove. And then in Song of Solomon 5.12, his eyes are as the eyes of doves. Matthew 10.16, it says, Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. The Lord Jesus Christ is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners. So you need to drive away the fowls. You need to soften your stony places. Number five, soften your stony places. The stony heart can't bury the seed deep enough. In Job 23, 16, it says, For God maketh my heart soft, and the Almighty troubleth me. You see, ask God to make your heart soft. People make your heart get hard. A hard heart thinks about self-loathing. A hard heart is bitter and thinks about how bad people are to him. But a soft heart, it moves on away from bad circumstances and it's ready to hear and listen to the Word of God. When my heart gets all hard and I'm bitter and, and full of anger at work, I can't keep my mind on the Word of God. But God can put some things in your life to soften your heart. God uses my children to make my heart soft. The Word of God itself will make your heart soft. Psalm 65, 10, Thou waterest the ridges thereof abundantly. Thou settlest the furrows thereof. Thou makest it soft with showers. Thou blessest the springing thereof. Reading the Word of God is like a good shower for your hard heart. You get in the Word of God and it softens you up. The Lord Jesus has the tool to fix your hard heart. You know, it's a stony place. It may have bricks in front of it, a stone wall. But Jeremiah 23, 29 says, Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? The word can hammer away on that heart and get it soft to where you can receive the word. He is the stone that can break up the hard places that this life puts on your heart. He is the stone that of stumbling, the rock of offense, and he can slam into that heart and get it soft. In Daniel 2.34, it says, Till thou sawest till that a stone was cut without hands, that's the Lord Jesus, which smote the image up on his feet that were of iron and clay and break them to pieces. He can do that to that hard wall that's around your heart. If you get rid of the stony places, you can take, take deep root. You see, in Matthew 13, 5, some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. But Jesus Christ can break those stony places so the seed can get down in there and take deep root, and then you can grow, and you can have fruit. If you get rid of the stony places, you can take deep root. That word root you need the root. Revelation twenty two sixteen, Jesus said, I am the root and the offspring of David. So the stony hearts received it with joy. But then the time of temptation came, they fell away. You see, don't just receive it with joy. You need to come broken and in a soft state. And that would have allowed the seeds to get deep rooted. Now, the next thing, cut down your thorns. 
The cares of this world and riches choke your interest and desire for the word. You need to cut down the thorns. It says in Matthew 13, 7, And some fell among thorns, and the thorns fell up, sprung up and choked them. So the cares of this world, your job, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your stuff, anything else that can be a tool of distraction, there's coming a day when all that is going to be meaningless. There's coming a day when all that will matter is what you did with Jesus Christ and for Jesus Christ. You see, your life is like an hourglass. God turned it over, and now it's up to you how you pass the time. What are you going to do with each little grain of sand? Will you let the Word take root in you and grow, or is it going to just be choked by the thorns? You see, Jesus Christ took your thorns so you wouldn't have to. John 19, 2, they put a crown of thorns on his head. That represents the curse back there in Genesis 3, 18. Cut down your thorns so that the word doesn't get choked. That way you can keep your mind on the word. Now the next thing, you need some good ground to grow and produce fruit. Get with the right people and the right spirit, not with the fowls. It says in Psalm 1, 1 through 3, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Man, he's growed, and he's going to have fruit. The ground soft next to that water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So get some good ground, keep a tender heart, a soft heart, tender toward God, tender toward people, tender toward the words. You need it soft toward people. Ephesians 4.32, and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, that's good ground, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Be soft toward God and his word, in agreement with him and everything he says in his word. That way the, the seed can get in there. Amos 3.3, 3, can two walk together except they be agreed? Can you walk with God if you don't even believe his words? Matthew 13.8, but other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit. Make your heart get soft. Ask the Lord to help your heart get soft. Read the word of God. Make it good ground, and then you can grow in grace, and you can bear fruit. Fruits of the, the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5. Love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, faith. Meekness, long-suffering. You can bear fruit, some a hundredfold, sixtyfold, and thirtyfold. Hopefully a hundredfold. And then he says, Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Do you hear the sower? The Lord Jesus Christ is the sower, dropping those little bitty seeds. And he says, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Let those seeds get into your ears and go down into your heart.